For decades, the story of the first encounter between Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals has often been told as a clash. One side was smarter, more advanced, and ultimately replaced the other. It was a tidy, simple narrative, easy to tell, easy to believe. But recent scientific discoveries have revealed a far more complex and profound truth. The past was not just about the survival of the fittest. It was also a story of contact, of unexpected unions, of two human worlds blending in ways that would forever reshape our future. Instead of a war for survival, it may have been a marriage of bloodlines, a union that changed the course of humanity forever. The story we uncover today is not only about those first hybrid children born from that encounter, but about their legacy, a legacy that still lives on in each of us. What if I told you that within your very body, hidden deep in your DNA, lies the imprint of Neanderthal ancestors? This is not just a question of which species survived. It is a question of identity. Who are we really? Are you a pure, Homo sapiens, or the descendant of an ancient union that shaped the destiny of humankind. On this journey, we'll explore the scientific evidence proving that Neanderthals still live within our very blood, how those inherited genes both helped us adapt and burdened us with hidden costs. And finally, the greatest question of all, if we all carry a piece of the Neanderthals inside us, then where do we draw the true boundary of being human? The event that set this meeting in motion is known as the Recent African Origin Theory, or more famously, Out of Africa II, the most widely accepted model explaining the origins and early migration of anatomically modern humans. This was not a single march across continents, but rather a series of complex waves. Earlier dispersals may have begun as far back as 270,000 years ago, but most of those lineages vanished or retreated. The ancestors of nearly all people alive today can be traced back to one dramatic migration between 70,000 and 50,000 years ago, following the southern route along Asia's coasts. From there, one branch pushed into Western Asia and, by about 43,000 years ago, reached Europe. When those first bands of Homo sapiens left Africa, they stepped into an unfamiliar world, one already ruled by another kind of human, the Neanderthals. These weren't fragile shadows waiting to be replaced. They were the hardened survivors of the Ice Age. Evolution had carved their bodies into living machines for cold survival. Stocky and powerfully built, they carried broad barrel-shaped chests thick bones and shorter limbs that conserved heat. Their skulls were long and low, with a distinctive bulge at the back and a large pronounced nose, T, an adaptation believed to warm frigid air before it reached their lungs. These physical contrasts also hinted at deeper differences of mind. Although both species had brains of similar size indeed, Neanderthals were slightly larger. The architecture was not the same, Research suggests that because of their larger body mass and oversized eye sockets, much of the Neanderthal brain was dedicated to visual processing and muscular control. This left less neural real estate for higher cognitive functions, symbolic thought, complex planning, and maintaining broad social networks. It was not a matter of intelligence versus ignorance, but of different priorities shaped by survival itself. Culturally, the contrast was striking. Sapiens became renowned for finely crafted tools, symbolic art, and flexible adaptation, while Neanderthals were celebrated for sheer physical resilience and mastery of icy landscapes. Yet the archaeological record has revealed something far more intriguing. Neanderthals were not cultural outsiders. They employed the sophisticated Levallois technique for shaping stone, the very same method used by early sapiens. This overlap suggests not just parallel invention, but possible exchange ideas and skills moving across species lines. And here lies the dramatic question, echoing across millennia. When these two kinds of humans finally stood face to face, could they coexist, share, and even merge? Or would their profound biological and cultural differences ignite a conflict that only one could survive? 
For decades, scientists believed that Homo sapiens, sapiens had completely replaced the Neanderthals without leaving any trace of interbreeding. But a scientific revolution overturned that assumption. At the center of this shift was the pioneering work of geneticist Svante Pebo. Since the 1990s, Pebo had been fascinated by a seemingly impossible idea, decoding the DNA of a species long extinct. The challenge was immense. DNA recovered from bones buried in caves for tens of thousands of years was badly degraded into tiny fragments and heavily contaminated by bacteria and even by the very archaeologists who handled them. To overcome these obstacles, Pabo and his team devised ingenious methods to isolate and amplify ancient DNA. Finally, in 2010, they published the first draft of the entire Neanderthal genome, an achievement so groundbreaking that it gave birth to a new field, paleogenomics. The results were stunning. When compared to the genomes of modern humans, Neanderthal DNA showed clear affinities, especially with people whose ancestors lived outside Africa, most notably in Eurasia. The conclusion was undeniable. Neanderthals and modern humans had interbred for millennia. Today, nearly all people with non-African ancestry carry about 1-2% to of Neanderthal DNA within their bodies, a living genetic legacy of those ancient encounters. This discovery rewrote the story of human evolution, proving that interbreeding, not replacement alone, shaped who we are, but who are today. Fossil evidence, too, echoes this narrative. One of the most controversial examples is the skeleton of a four- to five-year-old child discovered in 1998 at Lagar Velho, Portugal, dating back roughly 24,500 years. The child's remains revealed a morphological mosaic, a blend of traits from both modern humans and Neanderthals. It bore the small chin and delicate teeth of a sapiens, yet its short limbs and robust build reflected Neanderthal adaptations to cold climates. Initially, the idea of this being a hybrid was met with skepticism. But after Pebo's genetic breakthrough proved interbreeding was real, the Lagar Velho child gained new credibility, showing how fresh genetic evidence could breathe life into long-debated archaeological mysteries. An even more astonishing discovery emerged from bones unearthed nearly 90 years ago in School Cave, Israel. Recent analysis dated the skeleton of a five-year-old child to about 140,000 years ago. And once again, it displayed a blend of sapiens and Neanderthal features. This pushed back the timeline of known interbreeding by more than 100,000 years, revealing that genetic exchange began far earlier than once believed. The findings strengthened the view that the Levant, modern-day Israel, was a crossroads where different human groups met, mingled, shared culture, and swapped genes across tens of thousands of years. The question of why two different human species chose, or were compelled, to interbreed remains one of the deepest mysteries in anthropology. Archaeology offers no clear record of what those encounters looked like. Were they moments of peaceful cooperation, fleeting romances, or darker episodes of violence and coercion? The answers resist simple storytelling leaving us with a mosaic of scientific theories that stretch far beyond familiar movie-like scenarios. One possibility is peaceful alliance. Small groups of humans may have forged temporary partnerships, sharing campfires, food, or hunting grounds in order to survive. Archaeological clues strengthen this idea. Both species used the same Levalois stone tool technique, and both practiced ritual burials of their dead. These cultural overlaps suggest not just contact, but collaboration, and large-scale organized warfare seems improbable. The Ice Age world was vast, the population sparse, and the cost of all-out conflict would have been far too high for small bands of hunter-gatherers. Another driving force may have been survival itself. Neanderthal populations were relatively small and scattered, Interbreeding with migrating Homo sapiens could have offered a crucial way to increase genetic diversity and guard against the dangers of inbreeding, a constant threat to isolated groups. Yet science cannot rule out the darker possibilities. Alongside cooperation and kinship, there may have been episodes of violence, abduction, or coercion. 
While there is no evidence of organized war, individual acts of brutality are well documented in the archaeological record for both species. Whatever the motives, the legacy of interbreeding is written in our biology, and it is not a simple one. Although Neanderthal genes live on in us, their inheritance is patchy. Modern human genomes contain vast genetic deserts, where Neanderthal DNA is completely absent. These deserts are especially pronounced in genes, active in the male reproductive system, and on the X chromosome. Scientists link this to a phenomenon known as hybrid infertility, common among closely related animal species that have diverged over evolutionary time. In such cases, hybrid males are often sterile or less fertile. These genetic gaps tell a profound story. After hundreds of thousands of years of separate evolution, Neanderthals and Homo sapiens were on the very edge of biological incompatibility. They could mate, but their children, especially sons, struggled to pass Neanderthal genes to future generations. In the end, this hidden biological barrier may help explain why Neanderthals did not persist as a separate species. Instead, their legacy was absorbed, woven into the broader, more fertile lineage of Homo sapiens. The genetic legacy of the Neanderthals is still alive within us, carrying both hidden advantages that helped our ancestors adapt and burdens that linger in our lives today. Nearly all people outside Africa carry about 1-2% to of Neanderthal DNA, and some estimates suggest that as much as 20% of the Neanderthal genome has survived, scattered like fragments across the collective gene pool of modern humans. One of the most profound benefits lies in our immune system. When Homo sapiens first left Africa, they encountered new landscapes teeming with unfamiliar pathogens. Neanderthal genes may have provided a kind of evolutionary shortcut, allowing faster adaptation. Variants of genes like TLR1, TLR6, and TLR10, inherited from both Neanderthals and Denisovans, strengthened our innate immune response against bacteria and fungi, granting immediate protection from deadly infections that could have otherwise wiped out migrating groups. The Neanderthal inheritance also helped humans survive colder climates. Genes linked to keratin production, the fibrous protein that strengthens skin, hair, and nails, appear in high concentrations among people outside Africa. These variations may have given our ancestors thicker skin and straighter hair, offering protection against icy winds and harsh winters. Some of these genes also influenced pigmentation, shaping skin and hair color in ways still visible across populations today. But this gift came with a dark side. Genes that once kept our ancestors alive now pose risks in the modern world. Neanderthal DNA has been associated with type 2 diabetes, autoimmune disorders such as Crohn's disease and lupus, and skin conditions like actinic keratosis caused by sun exposure. Other inherited variants increase the likelihood of blood clotting, a useful survival trait in the Ice Age, where wounds needed to seal quickly, but one that today raises the risk of strokes and pulmonary embolisms. Even our minds are not untouched. Neanderthal DNA has been linked to higher risks of nicotine addiction, as well as depression and anxiety. The distribution of this genetic legacy is uneven across modern populations. Studies show that people of East Asian descent carry up to 40% more Neanderthal DNA than Europeans, suggesting either multiple waves of interbreeding or a prolonged period of contact after the ancestors of East Asians and Europeans diverged. Even in Africa, where Neanderthals never lived, a small amount of their DNA has been detected. This likely came through back migration, when groups of interbred sapiens returned from Eurasia, carrying Neanderthal genes back into the African continent and scattering them among local populations. The destiny of the sapiens-Neanderthal hybrids remains one of the most complex chapters in human history. Fossil evidence, like the Lagar Velho child in Portugal, proves that interbreeding did occur, but there is no sign that these hybrids formed a long-lasting, independent lineage. Instead, the overwhelming evidence suggests that Neanderthals did not vanish in a sudden extinction. Rather, they were absorbed into the ever-expanding population of Homo sapiens. Several forces help explain this disappearance. 
First, the small and scattered populations of Neanderthals made them acutely vulnerable to environmental shifts in competition from the rapidly spreading sapiens. Second, the problem of hybrid incompatibility, especially in males, may have slowly eroded Neanderthal fertility when they interbred with sapiens. Instead of producing a thriving hybrid population, this genetic exchange may have thinned their numbers, gradually dissolving them into the larger human family. Their end, then, was not a glorious defeat on the battlefield of evolution, but a quiet and intricate assimilation. Neanderthals did not truly disappear from history. Their legacy was woven into us. They no longer exist as a separate species, but their DNA pulses in the blood of modern humans. It is a story at once haunting and beautiful, a people who vanished, yet remain eternal, carried forward in our genes. Their presence is hidden, but indelible. Reminding us that we are not just the heirs of Homo sapiens, but the living testament of a union between worlds. Over 40,000 years have passed since the last Neanderthal vanished from the fossil record. Yet they never truly disappeared. Their resilience still strengthens our immune systems. Their adaptations to cold and darkness still live in our skin and hair. And their struggles remain etched in the genetic burdens we quietly carry. The next time you look into the mirror, remember, you may not be seeing only Homo sapiens. Staring back at you might be the shadow of another human, long gone, but never lost. This is our inheritance, a story at once romantic and tragic, scientific and poetic, a tale of an ancient encounter that forever changed the human story. If you want to uncover more untold chapters of our prehistoric past, subscribe to the channel and tell us in the comments, do you see the story of human Neanderthal hybrids as a love story, a survival pact, or something darker?